Hello, welcome to our first podcast of 2022. It's lovely to have you with us today. Very excited to be joined by my very, very dear friend, Hannah Barnes. Hello, Han. Hello. So, January, do you have any resolutions? Um, no. No? I think this is one of the first years I have just sacked it off. Oh, fair play. Just when, no, I'm quite happy. I don't think I have the capacity to commit myself to... <laughs> anything new so you have so, two young children at home and yeah. you're pregnant yeah. so enough I, is enough I just thought I've got enough to commit to so oh I'm on the bus I love that <laughs> I think I've been a bit the same this year as well yeah just don't need the pressure it's been a rough two years hasn't it it has I think we're, we're doing well just as we are so well I did actually I did want to start exercising a bit more yes because I feel like I've just I just don't move so I did start, and then I did two days, and I was so sore, and then I was unwell, so... Oh, well, there you are. And do you, would you say that you're somebody who, that, does that affect you? Do you feel kind of um, negative on yourself? I think it yourself? used to. Yeah. I think it used to, but I think I was just pleased that I was able to move my body at all for those couple of days, and then I thought, I need to rest. I love that mindset, Han. That, I think we all body. need a little bit more of that. That's fantastic. I think social media is obviously flooded in January, isn't it? With kind of the hashtag new year, new you, mm -hmm. all of those kinds of things. Yeah. So you're someone who doesn't really buy into that. I, I can. Like, I think it's really easy to get sucked into it and think you need to. Um, and I think very much in previous years, I have been mm. sucked into that and felt like, you know, you hear like juice cleanse, uh 14 day diet all that stuff I very much used to be like it oh yeah I should um but I think now I've just learned just a lot more about firstly about my own body um but also about the media and yeah. like it's so ridiculous it's like before Christmas you look at all the adverts me and my husband were talking about this the other day all the adverts before Christmas are so decadent and yeah. indulgent. It's literally like, have chocolate with cream and more chocolate and sweets on top. And that's fine because it's Christmas. Yeah. Have all the meat, have all the cheese, have all the decadent stuff. And it's hitting you with mm -hmm. adverts and you go, oh my gosh, I've got to indulge. And then as soon as the 1st of January comes, all the adverts are like, oh, have a mango smoothie, have kale, have, like, eat healthy. Like, it's yeah. like, and I feel like the media, like we are in a culture, I don't think you get this in like... Uh, lesser developed countries yeah. it's our media that's like fueling us to buy stuff yeah. and change and like even you know I'm saying I've got a new notebook um like <laughs> even just the whole like getting organized for the new year like yeah. think of how many companies are making money just from like new year yeah making us feel we need to change yeah and making us absolutely. feel you should get some exercise equipment get a juicer get sign up to my diet da, 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 mm. da. Um, it's all fueling each other I think yeah. you know like the decadence before Christmas they go right let's hit them with their guilt yeah in January and let's make them feel they need to you know be extra healthy yeah and which actually really brilliantly brings us on to what we're going to talk about today which is failure right and I think you're right I think the media social media tease us up in December and I don't know about you but I come into January I mean we're at the end of January now the wheels have come off for a lot of people you're kind of thinking, well, I'm falling off the wagon and waving it down the road. Bye-bye yeah. Weight Watchers. Bye-bye Slimming World. You know, dry January didn't last. Veganuary didn't last. You kind of come to the end of this quite gloomy, cold month feeling like, well, I've absolutely failed. Yeah. And I haven't even come into the second month of this new year yet. Yeah, you yeah. know, we, we kind of start up high octane with all of the yeah, I'm going to do this. This is the, this is my year. And then by the end of January, we've completely plummeted. And that is really difficult, I think, for a lot of people to process. Mm. And it's sad, yeah, isn't yeah. it? It's sad that we, we put that kind of pressure on ourselves. So just more broadly then about failure, do, would you say that there's maybe been something or a time in your life where it might have looked or felt like you had failed Many times, yes. Yeah. So many times. <laughs> Some of them have been real failures. Um, but um, one major one comes to mind, and that's more recently. Yeah. Um, so uh, my husband and I are actors and performers, and for a long time we were working for this 
um, theatre and education company, charity, going to schools and stuff. And we were doing that for a number of years, but with little ones, we just mm. felt like that season was up. And we really felt like it was right to 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 bring the theatre, but to add our audiences and to maybe yeah. just revision the theatre company. And, um, you know, we took it to our bosses and they loved the idea, but they didn't want to run it themselves yeah. in that. And we said, that's absolutely fair enough. And we were at the end of a season and it was totally right that we left. Yeah. Um, so we had, this was in... Timing is important here, Jess. Okay. This was in like December 2019. Oh dear. Before the world changed for good. <laughs> so in January, we handed in our notices ready to start in the spring of 2020. Oh. And then, um, yeah. The big The scene. world fell apart <laughs> yeah. in March 2020, just as we were considering, you know, what we had all these jobs lined up. We had like tours lined up. Brilliant. We had like lots of freelance jobs ready while, you know, we sort of thought, Freelance, set up our own theatre company. Yeah. You know, it was still big and scary to do, but at least we kind of had some jobs in the pipeline. Really exciting. You know, Honeymoon we, period. Oh, it was, yeah, it was, yeah. let's dream dreams. Obviously, March, the world shuts down. Theatres, not a chance of opening. Oh, gosh. Like, all the acting stuff, everything was cancelled overnight. And we were like, oh, what great timing. And, you, you know, as you did, you kind of think, oh, well, maybe by June... Oh, yeah. ...we'll be back. Yeah. You know, like, I look back at our little planning list, and it's like, my, uh, like oh, maybe maybe in the summer we can do this. <laughs> maybe in the, maybe in autumn we could start performing. No, no, no. No. As we know, it all just, you know, sort of, but honestly, it was the best season we have had as a family, and our forced rest to not do anything or not be on tour or not going out. You know, we had two little children. Like Ivy was two and a half and Ezra was still a baby. Yeah. And we just had the best, best lockdown. And I know it wasn't easy for so many people, but for us, I felt like it was exactly where we were supposed to be. Yeah. It felt like just us stepping out was enough. Yeah. And, you know, we have faith. Yeah. And honestly, it felt like God provided for us financially, yeah. you know, in a season of lack where there was nothing. We somehow had money. We, you know, our boiler broke within the first week of lockdown and we didn't have much money. But somehow we managed to get this funding through a friend who knew something over there. And we had a free boiler. That's amazing. Like, provided for us. So it felt like we were in exactly the right place. And it just felt like we had peace. Like we just yeah. had this a piece that wasn't just us sticking our head in the sand and yeah. being, it's all going to be okay. It was a piece that, you know, when people said, oh, well, don't you need to go and get a job in a supermarket? Don't you need to go out and earn some money? Mm. We felt like, no, actually, this is where we're supposed to be. And it's funny because when um, we, a few years ago, before all this, um, somewhere, um, someone prayed for us and they they said, this phrase to us which is really important they said I really feel that once you have a family um you you need to prioritize house home and family you need to make that your priority make that your foundation and from that will come all your inspiration in the creative arts amazing and normal and you know I I forget that sometimes and I think that you know on the stage doing all the stuff that should be my priority yeah so I can provide for my family so I can get many yeah. to provide for my family but actually it's been the other way around mm. and actually like settling in making this home and my family and our family a priority has actually inspired us more and 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 enabled us more to create you know yeah. even sort of in the last year or two through lockdown we've had some we've had loads of ideas that have come that stemmed from being together as a family so it's a bit upside down. Yeah. But definitely I have felt like this is success. Yeah. Even though lots of people are like, oh, I'm so sorry. That sounds mm. really hard. And I'm like, no, it's been the best. Like, yeah. It's been so brilliant. And it's enabled us to just take time and really plan, you know, what we want to dream um, for the theatre company and for our jobs. And it's meant that we've had loads of random jobs that we would have never done before and like added to our skill set. So I think that, to me, and I think, you know, in terms of our faith, I think that's that's real success. That's incredible. So your faith then 
has completely <clears throat> shaped your perspective on what failure is and what success is. So like you said, in the eyes of kind of the, the normal world, you had a business project that totally bombed out. Yeah. But actually, as you said, it was one of the most fruitful times of your lives totally. as a family. Yeah. That is amazing. And I think it's really interesting, isn't it, when we think about the person of Jesus and how in the society that Jesus lived in, being married, having children, having work, um, all of these things, having connections were really, really important, much like it is today. But it tells us in the Bible that Jesus died the death of a criminal, absolutely penniless, homeless, no wife, no children. He'd hang out with people who were seen as unclean. Mm. The religious leaders were after him. The political leaders were after him. Even the king was after him. Yet this person is probably the most influential human being that has ever lived. Like, how do you respond to that? Like, what, what do you think about this person mm. of Jesus and how that affects your real life today? Mm. I, it's, it's, I was talking to my husband about this and he said, it's funny because in terms of success and failure, it was, it was, his life was a successful failure. Yeah. Do you know? Like yeah. it was, that's exactly what God wanted mm. and it was upside down. And that's what makes me think, well, it must be God because it doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know, he had such a motley crew joining him that and when when you sort of you read it in the bible and you don't really understand it because you know we're not in that culture but yeah um the people that he attracted were just they shouldn't have been sort of in the in the church I guess yeah. you know they were like one of them was a tax collector which meant he was literally like an enemy yeah of 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 the Jews like why should he be involved yeah and you just look at these people that he attracted you look at everything like you've already mentioned and it, it so doesn't make sense that it has to, yeah. you know, like only God can do that. And I think he just came to really just break down every kind of barrier that we kind of think we have to be before yeah. him. Um, and I think, you know, at the heart of Jesus's message, wasn't it, was, you know, for us, this is really relevant that the first thing that he said was the most important for us was to love God. Yeah. But what flows out of that is the second most important thing is that we love each other as we love ourselves. And when all of the social media, when all of the money, when all of the ambition is stripped away, we should be people who are ultimately filled with love. And your love, I'm imagining, for your husband and your children probably mm -hmm. grew in ways that might never have happened yeah, had yeah. all of the trimmings been available to you totally. in your time of apparent failure yeah and there's a verse in the in the bible that I really love and I've loved it for a long time and it's in a really obscure book it's really tiny but it just says do not despise the days of small beginnings mm. for God rejoices to see the work begin and I, like I just keep coming back to that like you know he, he doesn't rejoice in in things being done and, yeah. and looking snazzy he literally yeah. is just like yes you're getting started this is awesome yeah and you know I just love that thing like that the idea that God's God just loves the small beginnings. Yeah. Obviously, He loves things to be finished, but just the small beginnings yeah. and the small steps. Um, That's amazing. There's another little thing that I go on. Do you if I share? No, it's, please it's a do. Quote. Go on. I've written it down. This is how organised. She's been. flicking her pages. So, is it, do you watch Brene Brown? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So she shares it, and it's a Roosevelt quote, okay. and it's the man in the arena, and it just really came to mind when we were talking about success and failure. Um, and this is it. It says, it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of achievement, and at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold, timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. And like, I think that's what it's about. Yes. Like, in terms of success and failure. Yeah. Like, 
just getting in the ring. Absolutely. And it doesn't matter if we're successful in the world's eyes or just successful in our own kind of heart and in our faith. That's amazing. Thank you so much for being with us today, Han. It's been captivating listening to you speak. And for those of you who want to see Han and her husband, Mike, in action, the theatre company is called Leg Up and they are on Facebook and they've done some absolutely hilarious videos that are very, very much worth the watch. If you've listened today and you've got any questions, as ever, please reach out to us at The Sanctuary. We would love to talk to you. But just remember that, as Han said, success and failure doesn't really matter. What matters is that you try and that you know that you're loved and you're demonstrating that love to the world around you. Bye-bye.